Welcome to Casual Friday. Hi, I'm Roxanne Richardson, and this is my weekly Casual Friday podcast. This week is going to be an abbreviated Casual Friday podcast, mostly containing tidbits from my social media feed on textile or knitting related events and articles and things like that that may be of interest to you. The first thing I want to tell you is that tomorrow, which is June 13th, 2020, I will be a guest on Suzanne Bryan's, also known as Knitting Suzanne, her off the cuff live stream videos. Um, I'll leave a link down below. She has already prepared the link to the live stream. So if you click on it now before the live stream begins, you will see a little set reminder button that will remind you of what time, of, of when the video is going to be starting. It's scheduled for 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, which is 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time and is going to be six or seven hours later than that for those of you uh, in the UK or Europe. Some of you may be familiar with Suzanne Bryan already, while others of you may not know who she is. So Suzanne is also a master hand knitter, and uh, the two of us met virtually first as we were both going through the program, and then we eventually met in person here in Minneapolis at a uh, knit and crochet show a number of years ago. We have had similar but different trajectories since completing the Master Hand Knitting program, but one of the things that we both do is we have YouTube channels and we uh, write tutorials and also create videos that support those tutorials and uh, have active Ravelry groups and that sort of thing. So there we have some uh, real similarities, but we also have some real differences. So it should be an interesting conversation that we have um, tomorrow afternoon. About a month or so ago, I mentioned a book called This Golden Fleece, which was a memoir written by Esther Rudder on a, a year that she spent traveling around the UK researching Britain's wool history, basically, and knitting history. And so I was showing you that, um, that book. And then a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that she was giving a presentation at the York Festival of Ideas on June 11th, which was yesterday. And it was a free, it was going to be done, streamed online because they couldn't host it in person this year. So I signed up for it and I watched it yesterday and it was really great. And what what's really interesting about these online webinar things that that are would have been hosted in person is the number of people who end up showing up to them because I would never have been able to go to that presentation in person because it was in uh, it was in York and I live here in the United States. But I was able to to join it live and more than 400 people did as well. The host uh, for the presentation uh, mentioned at the end that there were something like 460 people had shown up for it. And she said, if we had done that in person, the only place we could have uh, done an event that large would have been York Minster. And so it was really amazing that they could have so many people from all over the world uh, watch the presentation. It'll be interesting to see how COVID-19 affects how live presentations carry on going forward. I mean, I imagine that we will at some point in the future have these kinds of gatherings where people can uh, come and see them live. And I do know that there are conferences where some of the presentations are also live streamed. And so that probably won't uh, change for those co conferences. But I do wonder how how the accessibility to these kinds of presentations are going to be different in the future. It'll be interesting to see. So the next thing I want to tell you about is an article or it's really a blog post called Drawing a Bead on Crochet in Germany. And what this post is about is trying to figure out when crochet actually came to Germany. And they're doing that by reading and looking at texts and, and trying to interpret the words and the language that are used in these texts to determine if they're actually talking about crochet or if they're talking about other sort of hook related um, 
embroidery techniques or, or things like that. So Germany, the, like the first sort of printed grids of of color designs or beadwork and things like that were printed in the 18th century. So in the 1700s and into the early 1800s. And actually the first printed grid was an embroidery design, I believe, that was published in the 1500s. So they had this long um, history of printing grids, like color work types of grids that could be used for embroidery or for knitting or for other sorts of techniques. And they're trying to figure out when um, those charts would have been used for, for crochet um, as well by, by trying to interpret the words that were used in the text because the term crochet is a French word and there was a uh, technique called shepherd's knitting that used a hook that was uh, used in sort of um, in Scotland and but it was what we would call today slip stitch crochet so it didn't have those other techniques that you would have in all of crochet and the hook was quite different as well so if you're interested in that that is down a link is down in um, the video description so the next thing I want to tell you about is an article I saw uh, Clara Parks uh, retweeted it it's an article from the New York Times about um, Maine Island shepherding. And what I mean by Maine Island is the state of Maine and then an island within the state of Maine where there are sheep that have been there for hundreds of years and how people of this town, they go to this island a couple times a year um, to check on the on the lambs and see if they're lambs that need help and then they also go there um, in order to uh, shear the sheep every year and so it's sort of a community effort to take care of these sheep on the island so I'm going to leave a link down uh, below for that as well and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was that I think two weeks ago I was telling you about there's a new feature that YouTube is rolling out that uh, they're called chapter links and that you can see in the timeline um, below where if if the a person creating the YouTube has created time stamped links to different parts of the video that you can see those breaks along the timeline and that you can even even mouse over it and see what those uh, those are called now I have always included these sort of uh, section breaks with timestamps in my videos um, since I started doing a weekly videos back in 2017. Um, but in order for this to work in YouTube, the very first timestamp has to say introduction zero colon zero zero. And then uh, the YouTube, you know, algorithms can read that and realize, oh, there's there are timestamps to read and and uh, title chapter titles to interpret in place on the timeline. So I have like 300 videos that I need to go through in order to add that word introduction and then the zero colon zero zero timestamp. So I've been working on that. I think I've gotten through a couple hundred of them so far. So I've been going in reverse order. So if you've been looking for that in my videos, um, I'm just gradually happen um, about two thirds of the way done. I had planned on May 31st to host a live stream video, my third live stream on my own channel. And the intent was to focus on short row techniques and I was presenting or was preparing a presentation and then I was going to have questions and I ended up canceling that. Uh, I am rescheduling it for Sunday, June 21st, again at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I hope that you can join me at that time. I just did not feel it was appropriate uh, to do the live stream on May 31st given what was happening uh, in, in my uh, city of Minneapolis at the time. So this is the time in my Casual Friday videos where I usually talk about what's going on in my knitting life. I share projects I'm working on. I, I might give knitting tips or talk about something in my personal knitting philosophy or tell a family history story or talk about knitting history or something like that. Share with you some books that I've been reading. So the past couple of weeks have been uh, quite different for me in terms of my knitting life. Uh, knitting has pretty much uh, been very limited other than knitting yet another pair of socks. Um, 
periodically. We, my whole family, um, my husband and I, but also my two daughters, one of whom lives in Chicago and the other one who lives in the Netherlands, have been um, conversing and talking a lot and sharing information with each other and finding ways that we can help uh, our city of Minneapolis as we recover from um, the protests and, and trying to um, help those businesses and, uh, that were destroyed in the process of the protests as well as providing um, items to those communities where they had no public transportation for a number of days and where there are almost no grocery stores um, open to them. So we've been, you know, taking um, needed items to uh, the YMCA that's in a neighborhood near, very close to us, um, dropping those things off. Uh, we've been donating money to different organizations to help with the cleanup, but also to help um, in other ways and, and, and learning as much as we can and listening um, to as many voices as we can in different ways by reading books, by reading articles, by following black journalists, black scientists, all sorts of black voices um, to hear their stories and to listen to what they have to say. And so that is what my focus has been for the past couple of weeks. And it will continue to be something that I work on in the future um, as I bring myself back into a knitting more. So that's uh, in large part why uh, this video is shorter today. Um, and it's also why I chose not to publish a Casual Friday video last week. I just didn't feel that it was an appropriate uh, time uh, to do that. And it was more important for me to listen and learn and take action. And so that's what we have been doing in our family here. Once again, I will be on Suzanne Bryan's live stream video tomorrow afternoon talking about knitting and how I came to knitting. And uh, it'll be a, a pretty interesting conversation. I think I'm looking forward to it. And I uh, hope you can join me there and you can ask questions as well in that live stream. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.